Mm-hmm. Did you see him? Yes, yeah. He said, good morning, Julie. She said, good morning. Good morning, Katie. Yep, we missed you. You and David. Well, Chris Cannon, it is eight o'clock. It's time to rock. Time. Time. What time is it at, at uh, where you are? It is 6.01. Ooh. Oh. Early. It's early, but I've got coffee, Vera May, so I'm okay. Yeah, I'm at my coffee yet. <laughs> well, someone needs to get you some coffee right away. No, I'm waiting to have one. Oh, you're so polite. Uh, if I didn't have coffee, there wouldn't be a Bible study. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good to see Deneen and Lane from Canada and Maria, who's new in Iowa. Lou, you see a fellow Iowan there. Lou, Lou in the red sweatshirt. Maria is from Iowa. That's right. And Ty and Peter up in the uh, Washington, Seattle area. And everyone's here. So everyone say hi. And Teresa's in South Florida. Good grief. Teresa, what, 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 is that a new location for you? No, I've always been there. Have you always been there? Like ever shared, yeah. You need to let us know when there's a hurricane coming through so we can pray for you. What city are, are you in in South Florida? So if you're familiar with West Palm Beach and Boynton Beach, I'm in between there. It's called Green Acres. It's Green the Acres? <laughs> That's the place to be, right? It is. I had to throw it in there. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Lou, that was from a, a TV show. In case you're, uh, you're too young to remember those days, Lou. I, I do remember that. And I often call equate Cedar Falls, Waterloo to Green Acres. So that's really funny. <laughs> yeah, Sarah's, Sarah's thinking, I don't know what you guys are talking about. This, this is... Uh... Well, we want to start with prayer, and then we want to have a few updates, and, and then we're going to get to some announcements, but we want to make, make sure everyone gets a chance to get on the call before we start talking about what's coming up. Uh, can I ask Marcia to open us in prayer this morning? Certainly. Oh, Father God, we come before you this morning, corporately, as a group, uh, with our pray <laughs> prayers to love you, to praise you to give you honor yeah. for time together this morning lord we are yeah. grateful you've kept us through the summer lord, yeah we, uh, pray father for your continued blessing and care for us yeah. through the fall and the winter and the spring and lord just your presence with us today is yeah. a wonderful thing and mm -hmm. so we're grateful yeah. we thank you for those that have prepared the lesson and the mm -hmm. the uh things that we're going to talk about and um, yeah. just uh, pray for your great encouragement to us this mm -hmm. morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 And Francis decided to just come on in during the prayer time. Francis, it's good to always, it's always good to see you. Thank you. Yes, and thanks for being one of our sponsors for the upcoming benefit. We're really looking forward to our time together. Um, before we get to announcements, like I said a moment ago, we're going to give a little time for some updates, and then uh, when we get a full house, we'll make some announcements. They're all too important to uh, uh, to uh, have anybody miss them. So if you want to give a quick 30-second update, um, if anything's changed in your life since uh, we last gathered together, gosh, it's been a long time. The world's changed like 18 times, hasn't it, since we last met, so... If uh, if you want to give us a brief update in your life, if there's been a change, uh, career change, move, family, uh, whatever it might be, if you want to give us an update. Grandma then... Perkins, what, what's your update, Grandma Perkins? Well, my update is I, I'm continuing to love the Lord. I ain't had no change in my life. I'm you had not, a birthday? But, but 90 years old. 90? Yeah. And I, I'm healthy. And I thank God 
for everything he's done for me. That's my update. Amen. Thank you. And what he's done through you. Thank you. Not everyone gets to have their picture on the refrigerator of someone's house in Iowa. <laughs> yeah. Well, praise the Lord, doc, Dr. Vera May. We are so delighted to have you every day, every Tuesday. I'm glad. Thank you. Anybody else? An update. One reason I can be here this morning is I retired in June. Otherwise, wow. I would be at school. <laughs> That's right. You and Ty. Hallelujah. I retired. No, Ty, Ty's in school, but Maria's not. Okay. <laughs> what did you teach, Maria? What's uh, what, what grade? As actually, special education. Oh, and, my gosh. Um, I, I'm a, I was a paraeducator, a teacher's aide from preschool to sixth grade throughout the 26 years here in Iowa City, but the last year, eight years in preschool. Oh my gosh, you get a special place in heaven. Thank you for your, <laughs> your educational, <laughs> amen. Yeah. Patricia, how you been? Haven't seen you. And my cousin Desi, good to see you. Hey Desi. Any more updates? Well, I was just going to say thank you for the prayers that when we ended, I had come down with Bell's palsy or just a week or two before our last. So uh, this last couple of days has been the closest to normal my mouth and I have felt in uh, since the middle of April. So uh, thank God. you for that. Yeah. So there's a lot going on here still, but, uh, you know, every day's a new journey, but I'm thankful for you all and thank and give thanks to God for all your prayers and, and amen. You thank you. Hello, Desi. She's on mute. Take off mute. Well, us in I, California, I, we went through a hurricane and an earthquake on the same day. So that's something we can uh we you know we just a little, you know, California, when we have a when we have a hurricane, we make a lot out of nothing, but we uh we got to talk about it. Yeah. It's called a hurricane. We had a hurricane. Yeah. Oh man, you're making me laugh. Yeah, we got t-shirts and everything. Oh my gosh. I don't know about you, Chris. I, I didn't get a t-shirt. You didn't get a t-shirt, Katie? No, we didn't really you... get a lot of rain, but we had rain this weekend. Yeah. So it, it was kind of weird for us. We, but we did we, have an earthquake. When it's sprinkling, we call it storm watch. Yeah, that that we do. Yes, hear a lot from yeah. around our neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> we I actually went out this morning and we had rain. Uh, it hasn't rained in Jackson in over seven weeks. Seriously, it, uh, it's been so dry. And uh, I went out this morning and I said something feels different. And I looked down and there was little puddles of water on the floor on the on the sidewalk. And it was just like, where did that come from? So we're we're thankful for a little rain. Amen. I'm thankful too. What's the forecast for September 19th? Are we going to have uh, are we going to have hot and humid? We're in Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's going to be hot. That's right. And it's going to be humid. <laughs> Any more updates before we go to our announcements? This is your chance. Andrew. Hey, Dave. Andrew, is this your first time with us? No, I've been I've been with y'all several times. I just haven't been in the last few months. Okay. Well, well, well that back. puts you in good company. Yeah, I've, I've hung out for a little while. It's good to have you. Uh, hey, good girl, girl, Dave. Dave. Hey, good morning, everybody. It's good to see everybody back again. That day, we've been going around the room. Dave is sharing our embarrassing sins from the summer. It's your turn. <laughs> well, mainly we've just been really, really busy um, here with our business and and 
also uh, taking care of each other. How about that? What a great yeah. community to belong to. Well, give our thanks to everyone there, um, Johan and uh, and all the leaders and everyone for your sponsorship of our banquet. And we're looking forward to seeing Johnny and Amy. Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't make the cut, the cut for that one. I, I tried hard, but uh, they said somebody else should have a turn. <laughs> well, we just got a petition going to get Dave to the banquet. That's not right. <laughs> well, there's, there's more than one of us here at the Bruderhof. All right. So. <laughs> I, I, I stand corrected. We we need to get you here once, Chris. No, I'd like to. I, I'd like to. I just think everything I every time I hear about your community, I'm I think that's what it should look like to to live in a Christian community. It is. It is. And and uh, I get the best sleep when I'm at and uh, at the Brutal Hub. It's just so mellow and peaceful. So for visitors at least. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's good to have everybody. Uh, we're going to kick it into announcements. We've got a lot coming up this month in September. So uh, first, so welcome to all of you who are new and um, good to have you back, everyone back after three months, three months. Gosh, the, that was a long break, but it was uh, made the heart grow fonder, didn't it? Uh, so let's go through some things that are coming up on the click on the screen. So the first thing, we've got a movie night coming up. And what we're recommending everyone do is to uh, to watch or rewatch Just Mercy. And, you know, I think uh, Oprah made this book pretty famous by making it part of her book club. But it's turned into um, uh, a movie and other things. So what we would encourage you to do is get some friends together, perhaps people that don't know Brian Stevenson or his story or don't know um much about racial reconciliation and justice and any of the, the things that we talk about here Tuesday morning and try to watch that before next Tuesday because next Tuesday we're going to have a we're going to have a conversation around the, the movie so we encourage everyone uh, this is a chance to maybe invite some people to next Tuesday's Bible study um, who I talked to a lot of people in California who are so wishing they could join us uh, for the 19th but this might be a chance to give them a little taste of uh, what we do on Tuesday morning. So have a little watch party, watch, try to get, uh, watch Just Mercy. Um, Priscilla, do you know what platform it's on? Is it on Netflix or do we know? Um, it's, it's on Prime. Prime, okay. Okay, yeah, we'll find it, watch it, and then we'll have a discussion. We're gonna have a group discussion next Tuesday morning instead of our usual Bible study, but that'll be going on because our guest speaker at the, banquet the gala is brian stevenson so that's the segue into that conversation so uh next slide priscilla when you get a chance i know my, how come this thing want to uh freeze up okay there we go this is the, there there we go back one i feel like i'm at church and i'm calling for the powerpoint people and they're like pastor stop putting me on the spot there we go okay the 63rd gala how many of us have been to one of the galas in the past? How many of you have been to either Harambe or Jackson's gala? And I remember my first one in, in Pasadena, and it was a celebration. I could, I remember I had met Dr. Perkins once and, and Vera May once. I'd met them, and and they recognized me at the, the gala, and I felt so important. And they, they, they remember Vera May gave me a big hug, and Dr. Perkins came over. <laughs> so, uh, it's coming up in two weeks on the 19th. And so we really would love to have everyone come. And of course, Brian Stevenson will be our speaker. And uh, I can't imagine a, a more um, amazing evening than to have the people on that slide present, Vera May and Dr. Perkins and Brian Stevenson and our Tuesday morning family. So if you're able to make it, I know it's uh, 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 maybe you're just hearing about it, but maybe you can get there. So that's coming up on the night. It's a black tie fundraising dinner, which means some of us have to rent tuxes. And uh, we're going to be there at six o'clock. And uh, yes. All right. OK, what else? Um, what else we got there? For uh, well, we have a video um, uh, of Brian Stevenson inviting everyone. Want to try that? That's right. Let's watch that. Come on, computer. I, I got my Wi-Fi is just very low right now. Sorry, guys.
When you're born black and poor in Mississippi, it's easy to feel disfavored. People deny you, they discard you, they discriminate against you, and that can create bitterness and anger. It can create a kind of weight. This is one of the effects of living in the hood. Our <laughs> Wi-Fi is not the same as those in suburbia. We, uh, we, we've got to make the part of the gala, right? Mm -hmm. Elizabeth, can we can we raise some money for uh, some Wi-Fi? We need to lobby, lobby against something to get it yeah. back here. Because this happens a lot these days. Well, Silly, do you want to let us know when you pull that up? Who, who's, who's planning to be there on the 19th in person? And can we just get a quick show of hands if you're going to? Okay, Dr. Gary's going to be there, I think. Are you going to come, Dr. Gary? Okay. All right. Katie, are you coming? Cheryl's yeah, going to be yeah. there. This will be the first All time. All right. Oh, it's going to be so great. Of course, Ms. Liz. Ms. Liz, what color is your hair going to be? Oh, it's going to, okay, you're going to keep it there. Because I was going to go pink if you were going to go pink. No, sir. Hmm. Not my swag. Not your swag. Deneen, Deneen's coming. Excellent. Margaret, are you coming? I see the hand, Margaret. I see two hands. Okay. Cheryl's going to be there. Ty's going to be there. We got, we got Ty the day off of school, hopefully, the day after. Um, it, did, did anything come through? My Wi-Fi is acting crazy. I'm trying to get on both. Uh, um, can you hear me? Well, I hear you. Did, did you hear did the video play? Video play. Video play. Okay, can you see that? Hi, this is Brian Stevenson, and I'm so excited to be coming to Jackson, Mississippi to celebrate the great life and work of Dr. John Perkins and his extraordinary family. I'm thrilled and honored to be part of the Perkins Family Foundation gala celebration that acknowledges, reflects on the extraordinary work of Dr. Perkins and his family. I'm particularly excited to be doing this now. We're living in a moment when there's so much fear and anger and conflict. There's bigotry and violence all around and many of us believe that this is a moment to lift up the beloved community, to talk about faith and hope and love and the values and norms that Dr. Perkins and his family have stood for for decades. I'm thrilled to be a part of the conversation. Can't wait to see you in Jackson. And please join us at the Perkins Family Foundation Gala, September 2023. All right, we got a, a personal invitation from Brian Stevenson. Did that show? Yeah. Um, okay. We didn't, I didn't see him, but I heard him. But uh, that was all that mattered was to get the audio from him. I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, 
No, no, don't apologize. We can watch it next week too if we uh, if it doesn't if it works. And we can probably put that on the website if you didn't get a chance to see that. But can you put up the slide, Priscilla, with the uh, QRC code? Okay. So if you haven't got tickets, uh, I suppose that this is one way to do this. I know it is. You can do the QRC scan. Um, I think some questions have popped up on the group chat. I, if you'd like to make a donation, I'm sure that the Perkins family would be pleased. And this is the benefit to continue the work with the youth in West Jackson. Um, and I think we, we're going to be recording the event, but not live. So we're trying to encourage everyone to actually be there. But if you miss it, it'll be you'll have an opportunity to see it <clears throat> at a later date, because I'm sure we're all going to want to see Dr. Perkins in a black tuxedo uh, and on the rest of us that uh, don't possess a black tux in our in our arsenal. Uh, and then, of course, to hear Brian Stevenson's message to all of us. So uh, if you can be there, we're going to be doing a, we're actually going to be in person um, for our Tuesday morning Bible study. So if you there we go. All right. So if you uh, I think most of us are familiar with the QRC scan. So if you aren't, you can take a picture of the scan to the right of the slide. And uh, you can purchase tickets or make donations that way, I'm sure. And we are grateful uh, the organization for all the support and sponsorship for the event to make the work that we're doing with the youth in West Jackson uh, possible to continue. So keep that in mind. And you know what else? Take a picture of this and give it to your friends, particularly if, you're, uh, if your church has a missions board or a mission or an outreach or uh, we would call them maybe a local outreach. So maybe you can give that to someone in your church who might be able to to bring this to uh, to the board to see if they might sponsor the event or continue to make a donation okay that's a lot of stuff to talk about but it's all really important so on the 19th we're going to be in person in jackson for bible study like the like the old days so uh one of the benefits of coming to the event is we're going to have bible study at antioch uh on the 19th and um and for those of you that can't make it, you get to have Ron Spann lead you in Bible study. So either way, we call that a win-win where I'm from. So either you get to have Ron Spann lead you in Bible study on Zoom, or you get to be with the rest of us in person, uh, fellowshipping together at Antioch and giving out yeah, big hugs that we haven't, haven't been able to give out together in a long time. Okay, back to you in the studio. Right. And if you um, there's some people who want to um, sponsor the event or um, give donations, just if you want to do it that way, you can um, just go to our regular website. And when you pull down and it says general fund or um, summer program, just select um, select gala sponsor. And I just want to thank all you guys who are sponsors sponsoring our event. It's going to come off very well. Uh, we're looking forward to a wonderful time together at the Civil Rights Museum here in Jackson. And I know, um, uh, raise your hand if you are coming, because I know there are a lot of people who are coming from out of town. Margie, uh, Gary, and family. Okay, we're just, it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting time. So, um, and. Uh, we want to do some more check-in just to see how everyone's doing. Uh, if you have an update on anything, Jody, uh, we haven't seen—I haven't seen you all summer. And uh, hey, you want to an update of where are you? Are you in Africa or are you in America? Um, I am still in Rwanda. I um, will be in the states for about six weeks, seven weeks starting on the end of September to the middle of November. Um, it has been an exhausting, draining, challenging, fun, painful, perplexing time um, here this summer. I would ask you to pray, all of you, I don't know how much you've heard about the news, but there, I don't know if this makes it to the news there, but there's a barbaric anti-LGBTQ law that's passed in Uganda, um, which in some cases um, could be a death sentence and people are really, really, really scared. Um, and also if you could be praying, especially for a young man who's homosexual, who's a part of the parish that I serve at, 
who essentially has been told by the senior leadership above me um, that he's not really wanted around because they think he's a danger to the children in the church, which is ludicrous, but it's been absolutely devastating to him um, because he's an absolutely amazing young man. His name is Kevin. Um, and he's just, he, he really, he's one of the most faithful evangelists for the gospel I've ever met. Um, and it's just heartbreaking because he's devastated at what the church here, I mean, the church in Africa is overwhelmingly anti LGBTQ and to see someone so badly hurt and betrayed, um, by the church that he has served so faithfully. I mean, he didn't, not many people knew that he was gay and so it was okay. But then um, I don't know what happened this weekend because I was at another church and um, I came back and he essentially said that he had been told to go. So, and not so many words. That is, that's, uh, that, so if yeah. we could really, really be praying, just be praying mm -hmm. um, for the church in Africa, because it's, I mean, it's start. I mean, that sentiment has already started to spread to Kenya. Um, it will probably spread here. I mean, here it's very much of a don't ask, don't tell kind of mentality, but there are people who are pressuring the government to come up with a law that is almost as strong as the one in Uganda. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. And, and um, you guys keep, um, Keep Jody in your prayer and, and her community there in Rwanda. And for well, your mercies. Um, we decided that uh, we were going to, for the month of September, we were um, going to hold off on the study of Gal the book of Galatians and begin the, begin the study on, I think it's October 3rd, Tuesday, October 3rd. But we do have a preview for you. Um, Dr. Vander Ark, he is going to give us a um, just a preview of what of the book of Galatians, our, what our study is going to be. Thank you. Thank you, Priscilla. Yes, we are going to have uh, a great time looking at the book of Galatians. And I urge you all to open your Bibles and look at the book of Galatians. It was written by the Apostle Paul, and it was his first book. It was written about the year 48, and Paul had great concerns about the church in Galatia. Now, Galatia, as everybody knows, is Asia Minor, and Paul had been there. Uh, he had gone to Antioch, of Placidia, to Iconium, to Lystra, to Derbe, and Paul had great concerns about the people there. The people in Galatia were caught up in the Old Testament Torah and were following many of the laws of ancient Palestine of the Israelites. And Paul urged them not to follow old rules, but to follow the new good news of Jesus Christ and what he had done for us all. And so we are going to spend uh, probably a couple of months looking in great detail about what the book of Galatians teaches us. So I have a lot more to say about Galatians, but at this point, I would like to turn things over to Ron Spann. Ron Spann is much more a theologian than I am. So Ron, give us a little introduction about what Paul is talking about 
in this book of Galatians. The book of Galatians is known as Luther's book because of what Galatians teaches. And Paul felt, excuse me, and Luther felt that it was very important to have a clear understanding of what Paul is teaching us in the book of Galatians. Ron, what's he teaching us? Well, uh, thank you, Gary. And you are too modest because you have been such a gift to us in uh, helping us find our way through so many important parts of our scripture. Um, I'm very excited that we're going to be studying this book, and I hope one of the things we can do is maybe take it back from Luther. Um, he certainly used it for a major role in uh, 15th and 16th century Europe and the things they were going through, the Reformation, and that left its imprint on us Christians in the West, to Protestant and Catholic Christians. Uh, but I think uh, we have some pleasant uh, surprises from Galatians here in the 21st century, and that we may want to back away from just some of the old and, and see if we can bring some fresh eyes and fresh ears uh, to the reading of this letter. Um, and I think uh, it's, it's good because what I believe is going on in Galatians is that, you know, Paul had been, as Gary just reminded us, a missionary in this area. I think the lower part of Turkey for us now in our time. And with a wonderful response from the non-Jewish listeners, uh, Paul had dedicated his energies and his life to reaching that group of his contemporaries. Uh, and he had an agreement between the leadership of the early church back in Jerusalem, of Peter and James, and the other leaders in the church there. Uh, Paul had a wonderful testimony that he was finally able to take to them and share uh, how Christ had called him, had given him a call, and given him a revelation of the gospel. And particularly with the responsibility to reach the non-Jewish world of his day. And they said, Paul, what we hear in you, you're talking about the real article. Uh, we accept your testimony, but uh, we didn't teach it to you. We accept your testimony that Christ himself has revealed himself to you. And as we listen to you, our hearts uh, are in sync with you. So brother, go for it. And uh, so Paul in, dedicated his energies to that. And uh, so he didn't go where other people had gone. Uh, he was going in, into new territory uh, with uh, this mission uh, to which he devoted all his energies. And so it was very undermining and very uh, discouraging when he picked up uh, that were those back in Jerusalem uh, some possibly connected with the Apostle James. It's, it's not really clear that they claim apparently to have some kind of connection, but who did not uh, feel comfortable with this freedom that Paul had been given and were kind of going behind him and going into places that he had reached uh, to say, well, actually, there's some stuff you missed. These were Jewish Christians, uh, representing themselves with an authority they probably really didn't have. And finally, the news of this has got back to Paul. And you will find a, an intense energy in this letter. I mean, he is angry. Uh, he is uh, uh, on high alert. Uh, as somebody said, he is white hot uh, in, in the writing of this message. And why? Because I think what Galatians represents for us, what we can see that's so helpful to us in our time, is that he is seeing that a promise made to Abraham generations ago has finally come true with the coming of the Messiah. And with the Messiah, uh, with Jesus coming through his 
resurrection, through his suffering, his death, his crucifixion and resurrection, uh, has revealed that God has finally brought to fulfillment the promise that had been made to Abraham so long ago, and, uh, and that something brand new is now underway. Uh, and the Jewish people with the Torah had had a wonderful mission uh, to find themselves given a life pattern, a, a vision of life uh, revealed from God, and to keep faith with that. And that was their task to live that out uh, as sloppily as they did, but nevertheless, they lived it out until the coming of Christ. And with that, Paul says, the promise has now been fulfilled and something new, uh, the hour that is coming and now is, as John would put it, uh, was in operation now and wonderful energies of another age, a new world, uh, are already invading this old world. So from the very beginning of Galatians, he's saying, you know, this gospel of Jesus Christ is something that will set us free uh, from being entrapped to this age that we're living in. And I hope that speaks to us because as Chris was pointing out to us earlier, uh, astonishing, discouraging things are at large uh, in the world of our age. And, uh, and it's easy to get caught up in them. And with the technology we have in our generation, uh, there are forces, there are energies that want to capture our imagination and that of the world uh, uh, with the words of death, the vision of death. And we should be just as alarmed as Paul was in his day that uh, having given a vision of life through the good news of Jesus, his death and resurrection and the bringing of a new creation uh, that was all given so that people could be free from living under the influence and the tyranny of the powers of their age. And we need that same kind of freedom today. And what it meant at that time was the unimagined. Uh, that the keeping of the promise meant that with Israel's vocation now completed, uh, Jew and non-Jew are both part of something brand new. They're starting from scratch with the coming of, of the new world through the resurrection. And Paul is saying, don't drop out of this new world. Don't let yourself be sucker punched into being drawn back into the old way of doing things. Uh, why would you, that is not what I called you to. That's not the good news I brought to you. Um, and so that's how he opens his letter. And when you get to the end of the letter, uh, he's, he's still saying the same thing. He says, you know what? Uh, it doesn't matter what you were before, whether you were circumcised, uncircumcised, Jew or non-Jew, because if you're in Christ, you are a new creation. Remember in 2 Corinthians when he says that in chapter 5, that any, when you are in Christ, there is a new creation. Uh, this, we are starting from scratch, folks, in a wonderful way with an energy supply that cannot be exhausted, coming, uh, the tasting of the powers of the age to come, as it says in Hebrews. Uh, and so it's on the line. And we will see as we go through Galatians what had been threatened how Paul understands what the vocation of Israel had been, how that is now fulfilled, and how something new is underway, and that it was just as urgent in his day as I hope we will find ways to appreciate in our day, uh, to hang on to that and to uh, bring the rewards of faith, to taste the rewards of faith and help others to taste the rewards of coming into a kind of freedom when you get the Holy Spirit and 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 you get reborn and mm -hmm. brought into the life. Uh, even though we're in the world in the flesh, as Jesus was in the world in his flesh, and yet uh, in his flesh, look what was possible as a son of God that he's willing to live out in us in our time. So, and I, and I, I think that's what we're going to find that there's some things that um, we've tended to focus on, and this is talking about the letter of Luther, uh, that I hope we, we can kind of get back and get some fresh perspectives uh, as we take a look at Galatians in the year 2023.
Hmm. Oh, thank you, Ron. A beautiful introduction. And the good news, ladies and gentlemen, is that Christ is all we need. Yes, Christ's death frees us. And we can now live by the Spirit. Amen. And uh, it is so exciting to have this good news that the book of Galatians is filled with. And so I'm looking forward to the fact that we can talk about justification by faith. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not the work we do. It's the faith that we have in Jesus Christ and what he has done for us. And that is going to change our lives and how we spend our time and what we do. For we are one in Jesus Christ. Hmm. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, but we are all one in Jesus Christ, who has done it all for us. Hmm. And so Christ is all we need, and that is the theme of the book of Galatians. So Ron and I are very much looking forward to opening this book. And as Chris has emphasized, the next couple of weeks, we're going to be caught up in a very special celebration. So this will give you a beautiful chance to open your Bibles and spend some time in the book of Galatians. And then we are going to take it apart and study what the book of Galatians teaches us. And I am so excited about the fact that the mission of Galatians is just as important today as it was when Paul wrote this book to the people in Galatia. For what this book teaches us is what we should be doing and emphasizing as Christians in the 21st century. Yes, this book speaks to all of us. So open it up and we will study it together. Chris, I'm excited about this. I am too. And you know, I, I think the challenge the, in charge you've given us, Ron and, and Dr. Gary, just a moment ago, since we have the time to get ready, Galatians 1, verses 6 through 9, might be some of the hardest things that Paul says in all of his letters. And um, and what he's saying is, what I hear him saying is, you better know the gospel, and you better get it right. Because if you preach a different gospel, uh, there's problems. So it might be worth all of our time to spend uh, while we're ready, getting ready for the official launch of Galatians 1 is to do some of our own. What is the gospel? Um, here, here's when we taught Galatians at our church uh, several years ago, it, it, uh, it, I, I put up about 15 different definitions of the gospel from leading uh, some, some long gone and some current contemporary pastors and writers and theologians of what is the gospel? Because um, it, we know it means good news, 
but we need to we need to go further than that right we've heard of all kinds of gospels we've heard of the prosperity gospel right there's one we've heard of the social justice gospel so all that to say that there are versions but as dr gary pointed out and ron there is the gospel the one that paul preached the one that jesus uh, preached and lived and if we get it wrong, especially if we teach it wrong or incorrectly, or we we add to it, there's a there's a warning from Paul, and it's the it's the it's the strictest, sternest, most devastating warning you could ever read, right? And and so uh, uh, it would be fun, and I say that, and I don't, and I mean it. It would be wor a worthwhile exercise for all of us to. Uh, to dig in, or Teresa, I, I, I can try to find those PowerPoint slides if you're interested. But it was a great exercise, and because we're we're not going to be lining up on Judgment Day by our denomination or standing behind Dr. Gary, we're going to be giving an account to what we believe the gospel is and how we live. And because what we believe, here's a question: I'll put it this way: What gospel did you receive to become a believer? Right. When you, when you and I raised our hand or walked to the front of the church or maybe prayed a prayer at Vacation Bible School or the Good News Club with Vera May, whatever it might have been, what was the message that you heard that you received? Um, and there's a good chance that what you heard and received is what you're sharing with other people. Or maybe you like, like, I got fire insurance. Anybody get fire insurance? I got fire insurance. Well, that was part of it, wasn't it? Right? Pr Priscilla and I got fire insurance. All I knew in the beginning in 1980 was that I was not a Christian and I was in I was facing the wrath of God and the God's justice and I deserved it because I was a sinner. The gospel didn't become completely clear to me for years, years and years. I'd say I, I'm still trying to I'm I'm still getting pieces of it, but but it took me a while to get past the okay, uh, God's got a wonderful plan for my life, right? Uh, sin ruined it. I need to believe in Jesus and go to heaven. But what what that left out was between now and heaven. What's my life look like, right? And and the gospel has something to do with not just what happens in eternity, but it hap but it has to do with how we live our lives. But in Galatians three, Paul makes another statement, and I'm trying. I'm too excited, Doctor Gary. I apologize. He, he says, "How did you begin when the spirit but try to perfect yourself in the flesh?" And he's reminding us that how we got saved is how we stay continue in salvation. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't get saved by by good works. We got saved by grace through faith, and this not of ourselves. It's the gift of God, not by works that no one can boast. How did we start that way? But then move into well, I'm I'm trying. To, the Judaizers had gotten a hold of the the church, hadn't they? And and listen, they're Judaizers today, right? Right, everybody. There are people, and it might even just be us. Judaizer, being a Judaizer is like gravity. We just naturally move and we gravitate toward works. And we need to be reminded, as Ron and Gary are reminding us, we need to be reminded that it's it's faith. It's credited to us the way it was credited to Abraham. Abraham wasn't saved by work. God didn't get God didn't change his mind in, in the gospels and go, ah, forget it. Let's just save everybody. We've salvation has come the same way from the beginning. By faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. So uh, it wasn't like we said, let's just go through Galatians. Galatians has so much to say to us today, all of us, because it really affects how we live and how we preach and how we believe. And what's our hope? And what's our comfort? What's our confidence? Is it is it baptism? Is it uh, the work that we do? Is it serving as an usher at church? Is it going to Mississippi and being a part of a team? Those are all wonderful things, but we do them because we're saved, not to merit salvation or to grow in confidence that we're saved or to make sure I've got extra grace that, that in case I need that extra grace, I've got that going for me, which is nice to borrow from Caddyshack. But no, I'm, I'm saying that we, we need to know that how we were saved is how we will be saved and how the world is saved. All right. Sorry for that. Liz. Chris, Chris I want to um, say that uh, the, this book teaches Galatians teaches us um, that, that we're justified through Christ and it empowers us to live like Jesus. Amen. And what I've learned over time is that there is power in Christ. 
and um, and he teaches us and when we live like him, um, it's his power that is um, is helping us to live like him. I remember um, my dad, if, or, and if any of you have, um, have any of his books that are autographed, you will see that he'll sign his name and he'll sign Galatians 2.20 under it. And um, that that's his life verse. And uh, and so um, he 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 thought that it was um, a, a verse that uh, teaches us how to live an, an incarnational life, live like Jesus. So um, uh, I think that this is a great book for us to, to study um, because we need to remember the times in which we're living. And uh, we started this Bible study, uh, the Zoom platform in um, May 2020, when things were, our world was upside down. We were in the upper room. And uh, and now we are um, uh, at a point where we can um, go out and live like Jesus Amen. and love like Jesus in our fractured world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And every chapter in Galatians has some big power punch for us to, to look forward to talking about, particularly as Dr. Gary mentioned, Galatians 3, we talk, we're going to be talking about what does it mean that there is no Jew, no Gentile, no Greek, no slave, no free? What does it mean? And yet we are male and female, but we aren't male and female. We're going to have to unpack that uh, uh, that paradox of there is, there isn't, but there is. What does it mean that there isn't, but there is? Because there is. There is no difference in value, but there are differences and we need to honor and we want to honor the differences, understand them and recognize that we are equally loved by our creator and our redeemer. We are all one in Christ Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Ron Potter, Ron Potter um, what would be um, a definition of gospel for, for you? Good question. Uh, it was that question that uh, I was interviewed about several weeks ago at Fuller Seminary, uh, and that question was posed to me on camera. Uh, what is the gospel? I was sitting next to a very good friend of mine, Dr. Albert Miller. Seemed like he and I gave two different definitions of the gospel, and yet not necessarily so. Uh, my definition uh, of the gospel uh, was... Uh, a relationship with Jesus, and that relationship has an impact upon how we live. The central motif is Jesus and Jesus only. It is not Jesus plus. And this is what uh, the Apostle Paul explodes about in the very first, the very first paragraphs of his letter. Keep in mind, we're not reading the book. We're reading a letter. These are letters that Paul is writing, not books. They are letters that Paul is writing. And that's how we should look at them, as letters. And so in the very first sentences of this letter, uh, Paul explodes uh, against those who think that, that uh, salvation is Jesus plus. Jesus plus customs, Jesus plus what we think we do in terms of good deeds. And Paul says, no, you got it wrong. It is Jesus only. Uh, and so that experience with Jesus is something that is core and it is primary. Keep in mind, however, it does not always follow the central formula that we as so-called evangelicals uh, have. And by a central formula, I mean the central formula that says uh, often too many times within our evangelical environments that, um, that our relationship with Jesus has to follow a certain salvation formula, A, B, C. Not necessarily so. Uh, when I became a Christian 55, 56 years ago, uh, my salvation came through a reading of the Sermon on the Mount. Now, that is not a typical uh, evangelical call to salvation. But what happened in that Sermon on the Mount is that I met Jesus. The central core of salvation is always Jesus. 
which means the good news is always Jesus. And that is how Paul begins this uh, great letter to the churches in the area called Galatia. That's just a very brief outline form of how I would approach it. What is the gospel? Amen. 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 Um, Chris, uh, yes. there is um, people say uh, the social gospel. And uh, is there a such thing as a social gospel or, or, or making the gospel a side? I mean, making justice a side issue. That's a great question. Um, I think the gospel, there's the gospel and then there's the effects of the gospel. The gospel is an announcement of good news made to humanity that those who trust in Jesus Christ and him alone, Jesus plus nothing equals to everything, that when we believe and trust in him, we are born again and saved and made righteous. And we work out our faith in good works. And so there is no social justice gospel. What, what we have is the extension of the gospel, the living out the actions or the acts of the gospel. I think of the acts of the apostles would be the acts of the gospel now in the modern church is that we now live and we care for the poor. We care for uh, the widow, the orphan, and we care for those who have no defense. And I think if we remind ourselves of the heart of Jesus and the heart of God, you know, it's just interesting in, the, in, in Exodus, when Aaron and Moses come back and speak to the elder, the Jewish elders about what's happened with Pharaoh, they tell them that God that what God has done, and it says they, they believed. But when they tell them that God is concerned about them, they worshiped. Isn't that interesting? They believe the miracles. They believe, but when they, when they hear that God is concerned about them, they drop down and worship. Mm -hmm. What we do is we bring the message of the gospel to all peoples, uh, slave-free, and, and of, of, of every kind, and we bring the announcement, but we also demonstrate the gospel, right? That's the tension of Galatians and James. We demonstrate the gospel, but there is no, there is no means to salvation other than by faith in Christ. But we do, that James drives home the point. Well, if you don't have anything, it is an extension of the gospel. We, we aren't getting baptized to be saved. We're getting baptized because we're saved. And anything that we do to merit salvation or to secure salvation is a false gospel. We, everything we do is because of the love that Jesus has shown to us on the cross that we believe by faith. It is now an outworking of that. But we don't put our hope in it. We can't stand in line on Judgment Day and say, well, I think I'm going, I think I get in, I think I get in because I went to Mississippi. Well, no, that's, you know, we, we do the, what we do because of our new status in Christ. Does that answer your question, Priscilla? Oh, absolutely. Um, I, this is going to be, a, a, you can tell this is going to be a vibrant study um, yes. that, we'll, that we'll have. And um, and I think that watching the movie Just Mercy it is um, will help us to um, see how we can live like Christ, um, do nice. justice, love uh, mercy, and walk humbly. So um, I'm excited about it. So, uh, well, we, but we're, our time is running out and we do need to um, pray. And uh, Marsha Reed, um, uh, would, would you lead us in prayer this morning? Let's see, I will. Did you want me to close out? Uh, well, if anyone feels um, led to pray, we can just take a few minutes and you could uh, just a couple people pray and Marsha, you can close. Okay. Lord, I thank you that Lou is feeling better and we continue to ask for his healing and your presence with him um, through this Bell's palsy in Jesus' name. Mm. 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 I second that prayer, Father, and thank you that when your saints are gathered, good things happen. Uh, hearts are lifted. Uh, our eyes and our 
ears and our minds are open to your word and what you need to tell us, Father. So I pray that we carry that and that it's nurtured and grown and watered in the meantime, Lord. May we dig deep into Galatians, Lord, and, and learn about, you know, what the fire that Paul had uh, for that in those, in those uh, letters, and may they uh, reach our hearts as well and lift up the teachers who will be sharing that message with this body. Father, we thank you that the same love that you feel for your son, mm -hmm. you have for us. And I ask this week, Lord, that everyone on this line would feel that love in a tangible, manifest way. Lord, as we search your scriptures, and even in our personal time with you, Lord, would you enlighten the eyes of our understanding, reveal the beauty of your son to our hearts in a new and fresh way. We thank you for this time of celebration coming up. And we ask, Lord, that you would even be in the midst, that you would show up in that place in a way that we not just celebrate the life and work of those who are here on earth, but ultimately the finished work of the cross. And as a result, the kingdom, would you reveal the gospel that you intended, the gospel of your kingdom in a new and fresh way as we study together, Lord, knit our hearts together, bless every household represented here. And Lord, give us holy boldness to do things that would honor your name, that would extend the values and culture of your kingdom here in the earth. Lord, and ultimately you receive glory from our lives and our secret lives and our public witness. Lord, that the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our Redeemer. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Father, I thank you so much for this time that we've had this morning. Lord, I pray that as we list, listen to the um, thoughts and outlines and, and ideas that uh, we're going to be talking about more fully in Galatians, that we would take time to read it through ourselves all the way through and then come back, Lord, to know your word better. I thank you, Father, for the word that you gave me this morning of freedom. It's in your word we find freedom it's in our relationship with you that we find freedom it is for freedom that you have set us free and so lord we go with that and all of these other good words that we've heard this morning but to fill our hearts give us grace and guidance as we go and keep us safe in jesus name amen 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 amen, amen. amen. when during our um during our time of sharing we forgot to to tell you guys that we have a new member here we have um little uh baby zoe and uh zoe wright is the daughter of curtis and kalishi wright she was born this summer so uh curtis how's everything going she is here that is real <laughs> <laughs> look at those eyes she is beautiful. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yep, she is. Well, um, we want to make sure that everyone remembers to watch um, Just Mercy um, before next week. And, um, and then next week, we will have a discussion of, uh, on justice and mercy and walking humbly. And, uh, and it's really getting us prepared for um, September 19th and uh, being with Brian Stevenson. It's just it's his life story. So um come back next week and we'll we'll have this done. And, and the platform is Prime. If you don't have Prime, email Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth <laughs> Perkins at jvmpf.org. So all right, guys. Um Dr. Van Dark, do you have a uh, closing benediction for us? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and bless you. Amen. 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 You all have a wonderful week and um, go out and love someone. Uh, what was the saying? Um, you don't give 
Anybody remember my saying? The only love you keep. The only you keep is the love you give love away. Love you give away. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> and, uh, that is that is so true. So we love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's been a wonderful time. And thank you for um, all that you do to love and support us at the Perkins Foundation. We just, um, we're so very, very thankful. All right, y'all. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.